So, look at the classification. What do we do in the classification? The principle is that is coarser, heavier and spherical particles settle faster in a fluid medium than finer, lighter and angular particles. I hope you all agree with this. Now, this one what a very simple example I am giving. So, suppose I have got a container full of water. If I drop two particles having different sizes of same density. So, after a delta t time the location of the two particles will be at different locations. Okay. What I try to say that is if I have a container like this and if I have water and if I have two particles of same density of different size after a time delta t what will happen this particle will be somewhere here this particle will be somewhere here. Now, if by some means I can separate them then I can so mechanically if there is some means that I can use this property of the particle in a fluid medium then I can separate these two sizes that is called the classification that is how do I use this theory of fluid mechanics to separate them. Okay. So, there are various types of classifiers where we deal with, but remember that we have to handle large tonnages of material per unit time. I keep hammering on this point because the scale of operation is very, very important in this area. So, there are basically various types like we call it a hydrocyclone, we will discuss at depth on this. A hydro sizes, there are mechanical classifiers, there could be air classifiers, even we can use air also as a fluid medium for that, the property remains same. Now, some of the design of these classifiers I will show you, it is not a basically workable design, but for understanding of this, like I have got a fit slurry and I have got a your geometry like this conical part is there, why I am having conical part? Now, because I want to use the wall effects also the particle movements and I can basically channelize my particles which are settling with a small outlet that is also another purpose of that. So, that I can collect them selectively by through pipelines or something and then I can pass it on to a pipeline system. So, what is happening? If I have a slurry that is a mixture of water and particles, if I pour them into a container like this then the particles will try to basically the which are having coarser sizes they will try to settle faster and if I keep pouring it what will happen? The always the coarser particles will have more downward velocity and the additional water what I am coming in that will try to go out that will carry my relatively lighter particles that is how we can separate these two. Okay. So, one is the separation another one is the collection of the separating separated particles. This is another unique example I can have series of this suppose I want to separate I have got a mixture of particles of 100 micron 60 micron and 20 micron they are mixed I want to separate them into say suppose 100 to 60 micron in one group 60 to your 20 micron in one group and particles finer than 20 micron in one group this is what we can do it that is I can have the mixture in the form of a slurry, I can pour them into this and then I can have water additional water that I can inject them into a upward direction. So, what will happen if I am injecting water here? So, if that upward water velocity is more than the downward velocity of this particle, but less than the downward velocity of this particle. So, what will happen? So, that particle will be carried and the coarser particle will settle, is not it? So, I can have a separation. Then that one say so suppose 100 micron particle, 100 to 60 micron particle I allow them to settle by manipulating this water velocity component, upward velocity component. So, I am left with 60 to 20 micron and below 20 micron particle that I pour it here then I again readjust the water velocity upward velocity. So, that 60 to 20 micron particle they come here and below 20 micron particle they go here and then I want another separation at 10 micron. So, I can separate 20 to 10 here and below 10 here, 
but what is the essential requirement you need to have that is I must know that what are the velocities of these particles into that fluid medium downward velocity of that that is what I will talk tomorrow or maybe day after tomorrow we will talk about that that is called the movement of solids in fluids that is basically the fluid mechanics part I will deal with. For the time being that is how we do that but here also the knowledge of fluid mechanics is essential to correctly design them otherwise I cannot do that. Then there are some designs industrial scale designs what do we try to do the same principle <coughs> but how do I engineer that that is a large scale operation the collection of separated particles. So, here basically what we do there is a see that there is a difference here the geometry and then the geometry changes. So, here I have got a large pool of slurry the depth is higher is like a swimming pool you have got a kids zone like this is a kids zone this is the adult zone you know. So, what happens there the fit slurry is introduced here. <coughs> so, your coarser and heavier particle that will try to settle here and once it is being settled. So, if you allow them to settle then it will be accumulated there then my pool volume will be less. So, immediately I want to take them out by some kind of your spiraling action like I can have a spirals like your screws you know and then I can transport them. So, that is a material handling system that is your screw type of system that is called it your rotating spirals and I am collecting the relatively coarser materials through this and the finer materials because I am keep I keep on feeding my slurry. So, there will be an overflow of my water along with that my finer particles are being overflow and I can collect them separately and then again I have to separate the solid liquid. So, I have separated two sizes after that I have to have a solid liquid separation that is what I told. This is another design where the basic difference is that apart from having a spiral I can have a different type of raking design. So, this is again the domain of mechanical engineers for a material transport chemical engineers fluid mechanics that is what should be the geometry of this to have an optimum separation the fluid mechanics basically non Newtonian fluid mechanics play big big role. Particulate technology what sort of particles they are what are the sizes how do I define size what are their densities how do I measure them are they porous what type of shape are they flaky are they spherical what type of sphericity it is. So, that all we need to know and that too in a hundreds and hundreds of tons of material I have to process per unit time. We are not talking about one or two particles, we are talking about large tonnages of materials. So, there will be some imprecision, imperfection, but that is the compromise we have to make that is how precise or how accurate should be my separation, but more accuracy means more time less capacity. So, my cost goes up. So, there is a compromise between your cost of processing and your quality of product what you are getting. So, that will all be dictated by that is why I need to separate 100 micron and 10 micron particles. What is the application for that? How much is the tolerance level? So, suppose for paper industry ok like I want to have a coating on paper surfaces for inks and all this. So, there if the sizes are too coarse my paper quality goes down. So, there I may have a restriction that I need to have particle sizes only that I cannot tolerate I cannot accept any particles coarser than that. So, there I have to look at because otherwise my client will not buy my material that is the quality standard they have imposed. So, that also I must know what are the application domain how much is the penalty for that that is say suppose my customer says that I cannot take 100 micron coarser than 100 micron particles then I must ask that if there is 1 percent of coarser than 100 micron what will be would you accept that they said no what would be the penalty they may say no that will be rejected. So, you cannot do anything. So, you have to be you have to maintain the quality, but if they say that every 1 percent increase in plus 100 micron will penalize 100 rupees per ton again you do some cost benefit analysis 
that is how much of we can do you know. So, that is basically the processing here. So, that is the challenge that is where we stop fluid mechanics, where we stop how much of fluid mechanical knowledge I should have that is also very very essential. If I look at only solid fluid interaction in CFD mode or some paper publication mode, I may not be able to design properly. So, I have to keep the economics of the process, the customer's requirement also in my mind. There are some screw classifiers in reality that is how do they look like. There could be some air classifiers also where we are using the air as a fluid medium like your know, cement industry. Cement industry what are the raw materials is basically the limestone most of the cases. So, can I use water for separation? No, cement industry will not allow me. So, there I have to use a fluid medium like your air, I want to segregate the sizes. In cement also size basically decays your quality. Pharmaceutical industry, I cannot use water. There are many industries like your agriculture, food processing industry, they may not allow me to use water. So, I have to look for dry processes where I will be using air as a fluid medium. So, that is basically the environmental uh, norms, you know many times uh, we have to use air classifiers to uh, uh, say take out my finer particles going to the atmosphere. Normally, in a power plant if you go there, there will be some air cyclones on top of the boilers, you will find that to arrest my fly as particles. Okay. Now, this is what the magnetic separation I was talking about like material contaminated with frost, uh, the ferrous drum material metal like I have got some contamination like during mining. Uh, suppose you have got some waste material in that zone, you are not selected removing that some metal pieces coming, how do I arrest them, how do I know them. So, I can process them pass the entire material through a conveyor belt where I have got a magnetic field here and through the conveyor belt when it is passing. So, my suppose my magnet is up to this and then when it is going out of my magnetic field, then my all my metals they are arrested and then they are basically thrown out to this zone and non metals they will come here. I can have a separation of your basically metallic materials and all. Sometimes not sometimes in many cases we also use this behavior like in your beach sand processing. Beach sand is basically where from you get the your different materials like when you go to a ocean I will show it in gravity concentration slide I have got a uh, good photograph of that. That is you have got some blackish particle in some coast you will find that there are black colored particles and there are white uh, your uh, say golden sands are also there. These black particles are nothing but they are ilmenite particles that is FeTiO2, FeOTiO2 rather and that is basically we get the whitest pigment out of that the darkest particle naturally occurring. And when I have Fe, so that means they are having magnetic susceptibility. So, we pass it through the a magnetic field and we try to separate them. So, that is how also you can separate these black colored particles from golden sands like your silicates you know that is in a large scale we can process. Sometimes we also use water as a medium that is wet magnetic separation. So, when I am so in this case how do I design this? This is apparently very innocent one, but that is basically controlling your quality of your material. So, where it should be placed? So, that dictates that if I know the flow path of my materials here. So, to decide about the flow path again I have to have some kind of your solid fluid interaction. What is the fluid here? Is the air. Okay, how much of resistance is there? So, I should know that if it is humid atmosphere they will be behave differently. So, what is the temperature and all this what is the climatic conditions many times <coughs> we use like this one we can use a basically a wet magnetic separator where the water is being used for segregating my materials because for very finer sizes like say suppose below 40 micron I want to separate magnetic and non magnetic materials. So, one magnetic particle can be adhered to the surface of another non magnetic particle. So, my separation imperfection will be there, but if I have a water medium I can disperse these surfaces. So, that they behave like your 
independent particles that is why and then for material handling transport of material because you have to transport the material from one place to another place. So, what are is the uh, so basically the a fluid which can transport your material from one place to another place that is why again the fluid mechanism come into picture again for even uh, magnetic separations. Then these are gravity separation processes there is nothing like that I can have a pure size separation I can have a pure density separation because naturally occurring materials when we are processing it is basically heterogeneous material. So, when it is heterogeneous material you do not have homogeneity in the material like it is not man made it is nature made. So, I have a density distribution I have a size distribution. So, when we say that classifiers in that now suppose here I have made the life very simple I said they are of equal density, but in natural mineral I can have different particles of different densities. Now, say suppose in this case suppose S density suppose this is gold particle so a specific gravity around 19.3 and suppose this is a silicate or quartz particle this is specific gravity is 2.65 can I guarantee that it will be here your density also plays a role. So, it may be somewhere here also. So, that we must know how to calculate that size density correlations. So, this type of your segregation will be there the different density in between also could be there the materials. So, I say that in classification we try to emphasize the separation based on differences in size, but you cannot um, um, uh, say actually say deny the effect of density distributions also and that is the challenge. In gravity concentration I say the emphasis of separation is based on density, but the effect of size and shape you cannot negate you cannot um, uh, say ignore. So, that is the challenge that how do I optimize my processes based on that how do I promote my separation based on specific gravity differences or density differences. So, if I group them the important techniques of gravity concentration there are different types of uh, processes based on the mostly the fluid mechanics based processes these are we are essentially dealing with fluids one is called flowing film concentration we will talk about that then there is a jigging then there are titerbate separation centrifugal separation enhanced gravity separation. I will try to tell you what is the principle of this flowing film concentration. Basically <coughs> you know the if you have taken a basic course in fluid mechanics you will understand that if I have a channel suppose I have got a rectangular channel and I have having a flow of water. So, what will happen I will have a thickness of water depending upon what is the so, quantum of water and at what rate it is going. Then I will have a velocity profile that means, the fluid which is adhered to the surface of that channel there the velocity is almost 0 because of high shear and as you go up the depth the velocity increases. So, that is why we call it velocity profile. Okay. So, what will happen? So, that principle we are using it even in mineral processing that is called your fluid flow behavior. Now, if I have a slurry that is I wanted to have a separation between two particles based on the differences in the density and I mix it with water and I let it flow through a channel inclined channel. So, towards the particle axis there will be a velocity profile of my fluid and what about the particles. The particles based on its settling velocity in the downward direction they will be having a concentration gradient are you getting there. So, that means, I will have different particles at different layers and they are being transported at different velocities. So, at the end of that if I have some kind of a splitter so, I have got a segregation, I have got a separation. Now, how do I collect them? 
if I can correctly predict that which particles should be at which layer, I can design a splitter so that I can separate these two particles and that is basically a flowing film concentrator and this is what I will be talking in my next round of course that is how we can use the basic principles of fluid mechanics in modeling of this type of separators. A bit of higher level of fluid mechanics I will be talking but that is one example I want to give that is how the basic principles of fluid mechanics you can apply to properly design this type of separator to understand the mechanism of particle separation in this. Okay? So, that is a later stage not today. So, there are various types of designs on this and then based on that you can have some kind of your riffles or say traps like your mouse traps you know because I know that this particle will be here. So, I can have this type of mouse traps and I can say, uh, uh, say design the thickness of these plates that I know at up to this level this particle will be there. So, let me arrest them, let me trap them and finer particles let it go out. So, I can segregate them then I can separate them out also. So, there, that is the design aspect of this. So, again the mechanical engineers they can help in better designing, but at the heart of this you have to understand how the particles they get separated. Then some of these flowing film concentrators that is the basic principle and which are in operation I will show you. It is called a basically cone type of separator, they are basically you have got a design like this and material is poured and then you allow them to flow through that and then I have got a basically smooth surface here. So, I can have a separation of different density particles and these are the basically the design aspect of how do I collect them separately the your heavier and finer particles. This is another kind of you call it tables, it is not only that you are allowing it to flow, but you are also shaking that, that is called a shaking table. So, we are incorporating additional force component into that, that is uh, that shaking what it does that is again the intricate fluid mechanics problem that is what I try to uh, show you in my next round of lectures. Okay, this is an introductory lecture and there I can have riffles, I can arrest them. These are basically being used for very precious metals like your gold and we can use this uh, the tables like chromite processing, tin processing where we have got a huge difference between your wanted uh, difference in densities between your wanted and unwanted materials. Okay? But the capacity is a problem for this, it is a, is a very low capacity unit operation. This is like a spiral, this is called a spiral concentrator. This is nothing but I will tell you that is I think every one of you when you are kid you used to go to the park and you have got some kind of your spiral type of your uh, say slide. So, can you remember or maybe if you go to the water park these days there are basically slides where you have and if you experience that that is as you go down you will find that you are going out of the system, you have a feeling that you are going out of the system, then we start shouting Margia. So, what is that? Why it is happening? It is basically the centrifugal force that is acting on you. So, if I am if I am here and if someone like a uh, say like this gentleman, so what will happen? As a centrifugal force is basically a function of your mass my mass I understand is more than him. So, <laughs> I will be thrown out of the system because my mass is more. So, my locations at that in your spiral will be somewhere else and his location will be somewhere else if you are not having your belts with us. So, I may be going out of some direction, he may be going out of another direction and that is what exactly we try to use it in this type of separators that we want to segregate and at the end of that we have got your some kind of your splitters, again I will show you the industrial uh, designs for that in a subsequent lecture. Okay? How do I separate, but that is basically a centrifugal separator where I am not using any pump or other means by nature by designing that how much of centrifugal force we can generate, it is around 20 to 22 times of the normal gravitational force field we can generate through this. And here the challenge is that what should be the basically design of this your 
gradients what should be the material of this okay that is a huge huge problem material then how do i control that how many basically what should be the uh, say gap between the spur to spirals that is called the pitch <coughs> length okay these are basically the design issues and this is, this is becoming very very popular in fine particle processing industry because it is a low cost one you don't need any chemicals you don't need any lot of pumping operations are not required and you are using the normal gravity force okay but definitely you have to pump the material up to here but normally what we do when we design a plant we use the different heights okay so they are already at that height so you are not using additional pump to bring it there because there are some upstream processes which are already occurred so you can use them then there are basically this is called the multi gravity separator modular multi gravity separator here what we are doing you have got a drum suppose pour my material and then in the drum i am rotating it is not a ball mill what we said the mill type of design but here i am not using i am not trying to break the particles i try to separate them and there i have got a flow and this is basically inclined you see so there will be flow so i want to introduce centrifugal force on to the particles into a flowing film concentrator as a difficult design you know so we have to understand how it works and all this but again this has become very popular in tin processing and chromite processing but again the capacity limitation is there okay and this was designed by professor richard mosley in uk and then this is called the falcon concentrator inside you cannot see i i show you in subsequent lecture what do you do the centrifugal force generation they are actually it's a basically flowing film concentrator but i am trying to rotate it at a very high speed so the flowing film action is there on top of that i am introducing centrifugal force so that i can enhance their relative settling velocities so that i can separate them so these are very very complicated fluid mechanical devices but that is lot of opportunities here to fine tune this to develop models to predict the performances of this materials separation behavior you can have a better designing of this so there is lot of lot of opportunities for the engineers in this field and you know the as the as i said in my introductory session that is as the time goes by the by grade of the ore is declining and so what i have to do i have to extra i have to process more materials per unit time so otherwise i cannot match with my requirement i cannot get my return so high capacity equipments are required now so there you can uh, come up with novel designs and all this maybe the design modifications for a container probably all of you have experienced especially the girls who spend some time in the kitchen sometimes occasionally you find that you do this experiment and as i have got rice grains and you have got some stones sometimes you have to clean that these days we are getting from your uh, good clean uh, rices but if it is coming directly from farmers there will be some contaminations now suppose i have got rice grains and some stones and if you let it be there nothing will be there you cannot separate it but you just shake it a bit and then after that you see that your stones should be at the bottom and your rice grains are on the top now what is the shaking has done if i don't shake i don't get separation so there must be some role for that shake so what the shaking is doing so this is what that shaking action we want to do in a large scale operation that is i got say suppose this type of your uh, basically the equipment where i have got it has it has got water and uh, there is a compartment i segregate it and then i have got some kind of screens here and then i have got a plunger a, a say i just suppose a actually mechanical or say pneumatic plunger and then i put pressure on this water column so what will happen this water will try to go up to this go out of this so but if i have a control operation that so that it does not go out of the entire system so what will happen if i my if i have my particles here the entire particle bed will be shaken so in terms of chemical engineering we call it fluidization so we try to fluidize the bed so 
In that case, what will happen? If I am trying to fluidize the bed, and then I withdraw it. So I am having pulsion and suction. So I put the pressure on the water column, I try to fluidize, then I try to defluidize. So in the process, what will happen? The particles which are having heavier mass, they will settle faster. A lighter one will be on the top of that. And then if I can predict accurately that what will be the separating zone into that particle bed, I can mechanically say, say to separate these particles. But essence is that what I have to know that how do I model it? What is the role of fluidization velocity? How much of velocity is required? Uh, if I reach the bubbling stage, the particle will go out of the system. How do I control it? So again, the chemical engineers, they can, because they are being taught this fluidization principles and all this, but that's for different application. I'm showing another application here where you can design, you can optimize the process parameters, you can have a models and all this. We'll talk more about this again on subsequent lecture. And this is one of the very important operation in pole washing. In case of iron ore washing these days, uh, in sometimes some other industries like your, uh, say, agricultural industry, sometimes they want to separate your stones and your uh, other uh, materials, you know. So material separation, they can use it. So jigging even in recycling industry, like your hospital waste management, electronic waste recycling, they are using these techniques. But of course, the scale of operation, the designs are different, but basic principle remains same, is the fluidization and defluidization. Then there is another kind of fluidized bed separators, and it's called teacher bed separator. Teacher bed means, what I am trying to do, say suppose, I, I want to have, I want to promote my separation based on density. I want to minimize the effect of size so that I can process large size distribution of materials. So, artificially, now say suppose in this case, I have got your density of 19.3 for gold and 2.65 for this coach. Uh, now, I have got sizes, this range from, say, suppose 10 to 40 micron, and these sizes are, say, suppose 100 to 10 micron. So how do I separate? So, I want to minimize the effect of size. Now, say, suppose here I pour them into this container and I make a density of specific gravity of 5 by suspending some materials which I can artificially inject or maybe the materials which are available into that, that sizes, if I can tailor made it, that it will be just fluidized here. So the relative concentration of these particles will be more and that at that zone my slurry density has gone up. Are you getting there what I am trying to say? Suppose I target that out of this, the particles of your 30 to 20 micron particles of quartz density, I will try to suspend them, I will try to fluidize them here, sorry. I will try to suspend them here, so that I can enhance the density of my slurry artificially and how much I will be suspending? that I can back calculate that to have a density of 5 of that slurry density, I can engineer that and then what will happen? So any gold particle irrespective of their sizes will be collected through that because your density of separation is at 5 and the any quartz particle irrespective of size, they will be on the float fraction. So I will have a swing and float effect and I can separate them. But that has to be in a continuous mode. Otherwise, my capacity of my equipment will be uh, very less. So that is how I do I, how do I inject this, how do I do it, that is again a challenge. So still, the research is going on. There are some separators on this. One is protex density separator, 
people claim that it is working well. In some of the operations in our, say, Tata Steel, they have procured it for your bromide beneficiaries and plant in Sukinda. I got the report that they are working well, but there are a lot of scope in fine tuning the designs to scale up and to have a better design of this. Okay, but the essence is that, essence basic principle is that. Then there are sorters. You can have sortings, okay, based on what principle? Now, so suppose I have got this white and black particles, I have got a belt, it is coming. Now, say, suppose I have got a detection system, some kind of image processing technique I can use, okay, these days. That is, that image processing tells me that this is a black particle, this is a white particle. And then, when the image processing tells me that, so that is where the computer science and software people can play a role. Instrumentation people, electronics people, they can participate in this. They are participating. Unfortunately, in India, not many people are coming into this field, but Chinese, they are going ahead in this area. So, then when it is saying that, okay, this is the white particle, okay, let it follow its normal trajectories, but there is a black particle, I want to get rid of this. I don't want it, or maybe that is my wanted particle. So, there is some kind of triggering action, and then there is air jets that air will try to force it from its natural occurring path and they will divert it and then I will divert it path, I will have a splitter here, I can collect them. Then similarly, I can have a detection system based on say your, say actually some kind of your isotope, some kind of your radioisotopes, we can use that. Say suppose some materials are radioactive, I can identify them, I can set it out. Some particles could be magnetic material. I can sense that this is magnetic material. I can capture them. Like your electrical properties. So the detection system based on the material properties, that is now a huge, huge area for separation. While the electronics engineer, computer science people, even electrical engineers, they are working on this area where you can contribute based on the particles physical properties. Okay, That is called the sorting. Image analysis is coming into a big way into that. Then there are centrifugal separators like a hydrocyclone where actually so suppose I want to separate 10 micron and 20 micron particle, if I allow them to settle that time requirement may be enormous. Like I want to settle, I want to allow them to settle at their relative setting velocities, that time requirement to have some kind of your differences in their locational positions that may require a lot of time. So, more time means less capacity. So, how do I do it? If I incorporate a centrifugal force on that by some means, then I can enhance their setting velocity difference. So this we will discuss more on detail. Uh, uh, we will be discussing that how CFD can help you in better designing that. All this thing we will discuss in subsequent lectures. Okay. Then there are enhanced gravity concentrators. So, we can have two types of centrifugal separators where I can use centrifugal force to separate particles. That is, in one case, my entire system is not rotating, but I am using some kind of mechanism to rotate my slurry within my equipment. And in another system, that is, I can rotate my entire equipment to incorporate that centrifugal force onto that particle. So that is called that we have named it enhanced gravity concept because we are enhancing the G force, we call it the centrifugal force on that. How does it help? That is what I am trying to give you. That is basically the classification and gravity concentration. They work on the principle of relative setting velocity principle. So if I look at the suppose if I have got three different density particles, 1.3, 2.5, 4.8, okay. <laughs> Then you see that as the sizes goes down in a normal, basically that is the 1G, that is a normal gravitational force field. You see that real, relative setting velocity difference as the size decreases, the difference is so marginal that I cannot separate them. The physics is telling me. It is impossible to separate below your 0.1 millimeter size if I use the normal gravitational force field. But if I incorporate a hundred times centrifugal force of a normal gravity forces, you see that even at this size range also, 10 micron size range also, 
there is a relative difference in their setting velocities. So theoretically, we can separate them. But what will be the engineering design of that? That is the challenge. Okay, and that is the principle we use it for enhanced gravity concentrations. Okay, this is already I have shown it. This is another can see centrifugal jig. This is a jigging principle. The jig I am rotating it. Now think of a huge machine when you rotate. What is the problem, mechanical engineers? The problem is is stability, is dynamic stability. Otherwise, if it goes out, it will work like a missile. So the safety issues, the design is a huge, huge problem. So mechanical engineers again can come into this picture. How do I design it? Okay. We'll talk more about that. There are various designs of this enhanced gravity concentrator, Nelson concentrator, Falcon concentrator. We'll talk later on. Then this is the dewatering thing. And now I have to take out water from my system so that I can reuse them. So this is what we are discussing. That is called a, a, your thickeners in a plant in iron ore industry. You know, you have got a large, your say, your uh, say actually cylindrical chambers where you allow your water and your study that fine particles which you try to separate and then you add some kind of a propellant so that I enlarge the sizes of my particles and they settle and then I can have a separation of your fluid and your solid and I can that fluid or that water what we have recovered they are basically mostly free from my suspended particles but you cannot get a drinkable quality water but that is basically reusable quality of water you can get and you can recycle it back to the industry, to the processing plant. So that is also an integral part of a mineral processing system. Then sometimes you will find that even after that you are left with some water going out, major uh, good quantity of water is going out with my certain particles. So to recover those particles, recover that water, you can use the different types of filtration units. That is your, it could be ultra filtration, it could be different type of filters, you can use filtering clothes and all this. Again, this is a very big area of filtration. Then, then in a mineral processing plant, what you look at, if you go to a mineral processing plant, you will find that these unit operations are there, but you need a linkage between one unit to another unit. So if you just take out your unit operation, and to a problem mineral processing plant, you will find out that you are left with only pipelines and pumps. Because you have to feed from one equipment to another equipment, the material coming. So the sludgy pumps, the pipeline designs and all that, they play a huge, huge role. Material handling equipment and other sort of materials that is for fine particles, for coarse materials, that is how do I transfer material from one place to another place? Like your, how do I store them? Many times that you cannot store it in an open atmosphere. So what should be the design of my your uh, beans and hoppers and all this? What would be the stresses on the walls? And all? Again, the design aspect coming. Again, the mechanical engineers, physicists, they can work on that. Okay? Material scientists, what should be the materials in that? <clears throat> so if I summarize, the basic flow state of a mineral processing plant is yeah, basically, you are getting runoff mine ores, metalliferous ores. Then you have to crush and screen. That is basically a look that you crush and screen unless or until it conforms to the quality for your next operation. Next side. Put it into a grinding. And then here, instead of screening, you are having classifiers because they are all finer sizes. I cannot use screens because of large surface area requirement. There are screen um, blinding problems are there. So it's basically economics. Then you are again putting it into a loop and then when you are getting the desired size of material from a point of view of liberation, then you are sending it to mineral extraction plant. It could be a separation or concentration that is for physical processing. It could be for chemical extraction plant that is for leaching, bio leaching and all this. Then you have got something, you have wanted material, unwanted material we call it tailing. What you are going to do with the tail? As is the basically a big problem is now coming. It's not a problem. I think it is our responsibility, and it's called zero waste. <coughs> so, how do I add value to my tailing materials? Again, the material scientists, chemical engineers, 
other people working in different disciplines, they can come out with some kind of idea that is how do I add value to that so that that is getting utilized and these are all natural resources. Why you are dumping them? Why you are throwing out? And when you are having very fine size ranges, then your surface areas are huge and these are basically very active surfaces. So you will have groundwater contamination problem, you will have your atmospheric air pollution problem, so you are not allowed to do that. So how do I make use of this? That is also another aspect of this your area of this subject. So disposal of tailings, the waste material, then you are getting your concentrate that metals and you sell it to the market and market is basically by the metallurgist that is whether they accept it or not. Okay. So you have to sell it, you can only sell when the metallurgist they accept it, otherwise you cannot sell it. So that is in short about the introduction to metal processing.